I'm going to show you Selco's recommended maintenance procedures to help you keep your vertical baler in top running condition. Selco has engineered this baler to require a minimum of your service and maintenance time. But, as with any kind of moving equipment, the attention you routinely give the baler will ensure a safe machine for the people who use it. Routine maintenance will also extend its like new performance ability. Selco vertical balers comply with all ANSI standards that pertain to baler safety. Its wiring and components conform to the National Electric Codes and the entire baler is UL approved. So you're starting with a safe machine, but it's up to you to keep it that way. All the maintenance routines we covered today are explained in the parts and service manual you received with your baler. It's generally kept in this case that also contains the baler's operator's manual and a maintenance log. Any maintenance or repair should be recorded in the log to ensure component warranties. Additional copies of these publications are available. Ask your Selco distributor. For details, call Selco Direct at 1-800-447-3526. If more than one person will be operating and maintaining your baler, provide a name and phone number of someone to contact if a baler problem develops. That person may be someone in maintenance, management, or your Selco distributor. Display the name and number prominently on or near the baler so it's easily seen by an operator if needed. And keep the information current. A fire extinguisher with an all-class rating should be located near the baler and visible to the baler's operator. It's a good protection from the threat of fire whenever large volumes of paper are present. Be sure the extinguisher is periodically checked and maintained too. If you haven't done so already, check with your Selco distributor on service agreements and schedules they offer for maintaining your baler. Selco distributor personnel are factory trained, thoroughly know all facets of your baler. They can tailor a service program to your needs, ranging from a complete turnkey maintenance program to perhaps only the annual maintenance routine. Distributor personnel are certified to inspect and adjust components of your baler. They use genuine Selco brand replacement parts for top performance. Their technical expertise may not be as expensive as you think. Well, let's get started. I'm assuming you have reviewed both the operators and parts and service manuals and are already familiar with component names and operating procedures for the baler. There are basically two maintenance routines. One should be performed every other month and the other is an annual procedure. We'll get into those in a minute. First, let's go over the daily inspection routine. A daily check of your baler will likely catch small problems before they grow into big ones and help ensure the safety of your operators. Keep the area around the baler clean. Remove flammable materials a safe distance from the baler. Visually, check hydraulic lines and connections for leaking but never check hydraulic lines with your hands. At a maximum operating pressure of 3,000 PSI, escaping fluid could cause severe injury. Always look before you reach. With the platen in the up position, check the hydraulic fluid level in the sight gauge on the side of the tank. Compare the fluid level in the vial with the operating range indicated on the decal. Look for worn, damaged, or broken parts on hydraulic hoses, platen guides, and wells. All warning decals should be readable. Safety shields should always be in place, and electrical panels should be closed and secured. Cycle the baler. Visually check all safety guards and interlock switches. Make sure they're working properly and have not been tampered with. Of course, if your inspection turns up something that needs attention, Consult your manual or call your Selco distributor and get it fixed promptly. We'll be covering some of the procedures for correcting problems you may find on your inspection tour in this session. You'll also find the recommended maintenance procedures in your parts and service and operator's manuals. The bi-monthly maintenance procedure on your baler isn't much more involved than the daily inspection. Cycle the baler, if necessary, to bring the platen to its fully retracted position.
Turn off the main power switch on the control panel. Never perform any maintenance on the baler without turning off the power and locking it out. Now check the sight gauge on the side of the hydraulic oil tank. In the raised platen position, the oil level should be three quarters full and within the range indicated on the decal. If the level is low, remove the breather cap on the top of the tank and add clean hydraulic oil, enough to bring the level within the proper operating range. Never overfill the tank. The hydraulic oil should be SAE 10 weight, non-foaming, with anti-wear additives and a viscosity rating of 150. There is some lubrication required, but it's quick. The bale door hinges and the counterbalance chains on both sides of the safety gate should be lubricated with machine oil. If they appear dry, coat them with a thin film of oil. That's the extent of the maintenance portion of this service procedure. The rest entails a thorough inspection of the baler. Start with a close examination of the hydraulic system. If a fitting leaks, tighten it. Don't over tighten. If it still leaks, replace it. Also, check for leaking around the platen cylinder and pump. Any leaking should be corrected. Next, get a good look at the top of the platen. If material has collected here, remove it to prevent wedging. Make a close inspection of the sleeve and pin connecting the platen to the cylinder rod. If cracks or wear is evident, it should be repaired or replaced immediately. The safety gate should be free of damage and slide open and closed smoothly. A faulty gate can be a serious safety hazard. If it isn't in good operating condition, repair or replace is necessary. All switches should be in good working order. There are five limit switches and one pressure switch in all. One senses when the platen is at the top of its cycle. Then there's a pressure switch that sends the platen back to the top of its stroke after it's delivering its full compression force. One switch senses when the safety gate is completely closed and another follows the gate as the platen opens it on the upward stroke. When a bale is complete, both a pressure and a limit switch indicates this condition and prevents further compression cycles. The fifth switch notes when the bale door has been completely closed and secured. All switches are critical to the operation and safety of the baler. If any switches are damaged, misaligned, or not working, they should be repaired or replaced immediately. Use only original replacement switches and contact your Selco distributor if you have any questions or other concerns. There are important inspections to be made on the lower half of the baler, too. Check the condition of the bale door. Look for cracks or bent components. And don't overlook the door's locking mechanism. It too should be inspected for signs of damage or failure. If damage is found, repair or replace the components. Now, open the door. Conduct a thorough inspection of the inside of the door. Look for the same signs of damage. Also, check the dogs mounted on the inside of the door. The spring-loaded dogs on the heavy-duty models should be straight and in good working condition. Repair or replace the stationary dogs if they're bent or unusually damaged. There's another important inspection to be made on the floor of the baler. Material can build up under the bale ejection paddle. Too much material can bend or damage the paddle. Clear any material from the bed of the paddle and make sure it moves freely. If the paddle appears at all damaged, it should be replaced. Also, inspect the paddle's hinge bolt. If it appears worn or bent, replace it too. Close and secure the bale door if no damage is found. Then, go to the back of the baler for the last inspection area on our tour. Check the condition of the chain connecting the bale ejection hook to the paddle. The link should be free moving. And, make special note of the master link. The clip lock should be in place and secure. Before leaving the baler, remember to unlock the main power switch and return the baler to operational condition. 
I suggest you cycle the baler once, just to be sure all systems are operational. That's all there is to the bi-monthly maintenance procedure. You see, it really doesn't take that long. Now, let's go through the annual maintenance procedure. Begin as with the bi-monthly routine, when a bale has been completed and ejected, so the baler is empty. Only this time, our procedure will start a little different than the bi-monthly routine. At the control panel, push the down button to start a compression cycle. When the platen is fully extended, push the stop button, turn off the main power switch, and lock it out. This gives us the ability to inspect the cylinder rod for damage. Open the bale door and lift the safety gate. Give careful scrutiny to the rod. Look for scratches or flaking and cracking of the chrome surface. Also, check the rod for straightness. If you find any damage or deterioration, it should be replaced. While the rod is extended, check the sleeve and pin connecting the rod to the top of the platen for damage or wear. Repair or replace as necessary. Also, inspect the clamps on the safety cables above the platen. The platen should be perpendicular to the cylinder rod. If it appears cocked, stop further operations and contact your Selco distributor service personnel right away. After your inspection and adjustments, close the door, secure it, and lower the safety gate. Unlock the power panel and turn the power back on. Push the up button to raise the platen back to the top of the stroke. Turn the power off and lock it out as we did before. Get your ladder and we'll start with the Baylor's hydraulic system. Begin by draining the hydraulic oil from the tank. The drain plug has been magnetized to attract metal impurities from the oil. After you have removed it, Wipe it clean with a rag and set it aside. There's an inspection plate located on the top of the tank. Remove it to access the inside of the tank. Inside, you'll see the screw-on suction type filter at the base of the oil siphon tube. Turn it counterclockwise to remove it. With the oil and filter removed, wipe the bottom of the tank dry to remove any remaining impurities. Screw on a new filter. Be sure to check with your operator's manual for the correct filter model for your baler. Your Selco distributor can supply you with the correct filter to install. Always use Selco brand replacement filters. That's important to protect your baler investment and validate any warranty coverage you may have. Screw the plug back into the tank and replace the access panel. Pour in fresh SAE 10-weight hydraulic oil through the breather cap to the full level indicated on the sight gauge. With your grease gun, give grease to the fitting above the fan in front of the electric motor. These provide lubrication to the motor bearings. Check the thickness of the platen's guideways. When new, they're a half inch thick. If they're worn down to a quarter inch in thickness, they should be replaced. If you measure the guideways somewhere in between, give them a coating of grease. On the lower half of the baler, oil should be applied to the bale door and door lock hinges. Any spring-loaded dogs on the bale door should also be oiled. The annual inspection includes analysis of the chains connecting the safety gate to the counterbalancing weights. Besides providing an even coating of oil over the surface of the chains, check the master links to be sure clips are tightly intact. Also, check the condition of both sprockets for wear. Repair or replace parts as needed. A side effect of the bailing process is torque, vibration, and general machine movement. These stresses can loosen nuts on bolts throughout the machine. This is the time of year when you should go over the entire machine to snug up nuts that may have loosened. Pay particular attention to the nuts on the platen assembly and its support structure. And don't overlook the concrete anchor bolts on the base of the baler. Of course, as you go over the baler with your sockets and wrenches, Conduct the same component inspections you do in the bi-monthly maintenance routine. Check hydraulic lines, switches, chains, and structure for signs of wear, misalignment, and damage. Anything that looks like it will cause trouble over the next year should be repaired or changed out. It's usually easier to do it now than when the baler is back online. And don't overlook the condition of the safety decals on the baler. If they're grimy, 
clean them with a rag. It will remind the operators you are serious about safety. If any of the decals are coming loose or are damaged, call your distributor for new ones. Selco will furnish new safety decals at no charge because they're serious about safety too. The only tasks left to do are turn the power back on and bring the baler back online. As with a bi-monthly routine, run the baler through a cycle just to be sure everything is in good working order. Then, note the type of maintenance and any replaced parts in the log. Be sure to familiarize yourself with all the manuals that come with your baler. In them, you'll find additional details on the care and maintenance of your Selco baler. Your manuals contain several schematic drawings and a troubleshooting guide you should find helpful. Of course, if you have any questions about any facet of your baler, your Selco distributor is trained and ready to provide you with answers. Or call Selco direct at 1-800-447-3526. Follow the schedules and routines we've shown you here and in the manuals. The little time you invest in these maintenance routines will pay back substantial dividends in a baler that will serve you well and safely for a long time.